Hey guys, today I'm in my kitchen remembering my booby, my grandmother, my Oma. You know, I use the word interchangeably. We owe in booby is Yiddish for grandmother. This week is her Yarzite. It's hard to believe, but she's been gone almost 25 years. And I'm remembering her and I'm missing her. So today I'm testing some recipes that remind me of her that bring her spirit back to life, you know, in my heart. Because, you know, she was my second mother, and we all love our grandmother, but my, my booby was the light of my life. So today, you know, remembering her, we're making a deconstructed stuffed cabbage, almost like a groomkey, almost like that Polish classic, except for this is just a little spin on that. We're also making a potato kugel, and we made that New York classic chocolate babka. Actually, we made two kinds of babka because we had extra dough left over because Tony and I, while we were preparing this menu, were a little zealous. Um, so, you know, again, these recipes are based on grandmas. Um, but, you know, I made them a little bit more modern. I've, and I, I've amped up the flavors a little bit. Let me walk you through as we're talking about the recipes, how I did that. Um, let's start with the stuffed cabbage. You know, Bobby would always take the cabbage leaves, boil them, fill them with a delicious meat and rice mixture, and then top them with a, in my opinion, a sickeningly sweet and sour tomato mixture. You, you can tell by my body posture. You can tell by the word, the word I use, sickeningly. I didn't go there. So what I did is I made a more savory tomato sauce to go on top of our on top of our deconstructed cabbage rolls. Now, the other thing is that Bobby would always use rice. I swapped that out today for panko breadcrumbs. Now, granted, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of shift from the traditional, but since I'm not going the sweet and sour and I'm going more savory. A seasoned breadcrumb with the, you know, a little bit more seasoning in the tomato sauce is going to work beautifully. Um, now, the kugel is a classic. This is literally her recipe that she would make every Passover. Pesach. You know, and granted, we made it for 12 to 20 people. Today, I'm making it for three. I have enough portions for four. Or, as you can tell by my bowl, maybe 400. Um... I took her recipe that was on this index card here and tried to make it work. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Remember, we're testing these recipes for the first time live with you today. You know, I'm going to let you know what worked, what didn't work, what additions I would make. Check the resource section underneath this video. You'll grab the PDF for these recipes and also my notes. You know... Testing recipes is not an exact science. It's an art form. You know, cooking not only feeds your body, but it also feeds your soul. And, you know, take it as an exercise of love. And, you know, have fun while you're cooking, testing, doing all this fun stuff. Okay, so we've talked about, we've talked about the glumki, or the deconstructed cabbage rolls. We've talked about the kugel. Next... For dessert, I challenged Tony, you know, who's my certifiable baker friend. He's certifiable in more than one way, but, you know, Tony. I challenged him to come up with a babka recipe. Because the last time I was in New York, which had been several years now, I'd been missing that deli classic. I wanted that sweet, buttery, yeasty cake recipe. And he came up with something that he'll talk about later in the video that's just friggin' gorgeous. Now, granted, the recipe we came up with was supposed to be, was supposed to make two small loaves. Let me tell you, the loaves aren't small. So, there, it, you guys are going to love that recipe. Now, again, fair warning. I'm testing these recipes live with you today. And I'll let you know what worked, what didn't work, and how we can make it better. Um, again, check that resource section underneath the, underneath the video and you'll, you'll grab my notes and you'll grab, you know, the magazine layout style for the, for the recipes. 
Now, you might be wondering how I'm going to pull all this together. I mean, making deconstructed cabbage rolls, making, making a savory kugel, cooking babka, that's a lot of work. Now, let me tell you, the only way I can do this is I lean into my orange print. I plan, I prep, I do my meal prep, I prepare my mason plots. I do as much forethought and work as possible to make this to make this work. If I didn't do the meal prep, and it, honestly, I didn't plan a lot of this. I, I didn't do a lot of this prep work earlier in the week like I normally would. I woke up early this morning and got this wild idea that I wanted to remember Booby in a special way. So I started planning, prepping, and I got my meal prep done just before we were cooking. But if I didn't do that, I'd have no chance in hell of actually being able to pull this meal together. It would just be way too difficult. Now, the, the one exception to that is I knew I wanted babka. I knew I wanted that sweet, savory New York classic. So Tony and I pulled that bread recipe, that cake recipe rather, together on Thursday. Now, we'll talk about that later in the video. So now if you look at my counters, you're going to see that everything's ready to go. And again, it's because I've done that meal prep. If you don't do that meal prep, you don't have a chance of being able to knock out this recipe without ending up more ball than I am. And trust me, that's not a place you want to go. You know, Rogaine, if you want to sponsor these videos, I'll take my hair back. I don't see that happening, but you know what? One could ask. Again, and remember, making a meal full of memories inspired by your loved ones need not be difficult. Take a deep breath, pour yourself a, a nice glass of wine, a beer, or make yourself a cocktail. Enjoy the cook, and maybe even rope your friends, family, and loved ones in to help you, help you do this. Spend some time in the kitchen with those that you love. Cherish the time together, because trust me, it's limited. Oma, I love you. I miss you. This meal's for you. Okay, so we're going to start with the kugel. And for those of you who don't know what a kugel is, it's an Eastern European Jewish style pudding. You know, for those of us who are Ashkenazi, we, we, know, we know kugel. It comes in several, it comes in a Passover potato version. It comes in a non-Passover potato version. It comes in a sweet noodle or a sweet noodle with cottage cheese. In a future video, I'll walk you through how I make my noodle kugel. It's, it's a dessert that is freaking delicious. It also works as a side dish. But today we're doing a savory, we're doing a savory potato kugel. So when we, when we started our meal prep after we got back from the grocery store, what we did is we whipped up two egg yolks, plus two egg whites. We grated three large russet potatoes. Was it, Tony, a half or a full yellow onion? Uh, half a yellow. So half a large, AKA huge yellow onion, some green scallions. And what I'm gonna do here, and what I have here is I have a little bit of breadcrumb, a little bit of paprika, half a stick of butter, now, traditionally, you would use schmaltz, rendered chicken fat. But you know what? I couldn't get my hands on schmaltz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, 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 the melted fat, combine this in with a kugel, the potato mixture, take the eggs, and I'm going to mix this together. Now, granted, it's going to be a pretty tight mixture. Now, Grant, this when I when I took Bobby's original recipe, it made enough for, according to her, enough for twelve, more like twenty, and I forgot that. So when I cut her recipe down to a third, it literally prepared all this potato mixture. I thought it was going to be enough for four. This is probably enough for eight to twelve. So again, follow my notes in the recipe and we'll make it we'll make it work. We're tweaking it live. All right, this looks pretty dry. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple more eggs and crack those into the bowl. 
and start to prepare the, the kugel for it comes to the texture we want. Oh, and we just have a little bit of eggs left. So the two egg the two eggs plus the egg whites weren't quite enough. So I'm gonna add two extra eggs to this. And I'm gonna mix this in. All right, that's starting to get to the texture I'm looking for. I'm gonna mix this in together. You know what, I can tell you already, it needs one more egg. And I want a little bit more binder. So I'm gonna grab some more Italian breadcrumbs. Now granted, if you're cooking, if you're cooking this for Passover, use matzo meal. Um, or if you have extra matzo left over from Pesach, feel free to use, feel free to use it. I already ate up all my matzah, so I'm using breadcrumbs. But this is a Passover, so it's okay. Again, you're cooking for your loved ones. You're cooking for your family. You know, cooking is an art form. It's not an exact science. All right. How's yeah. the breadcrumb? A little more? Hmm? More breadcrumb? I think more breadcrumb. So I can tell you guys already, this recipe from Bobby is great. But I need to test it again, because obviously the proportions we made were way off, you know. But again, this is, this is why we test recipes on Chef Bear, because you can find a recipe on the internet, but you're not guaranteed that it's going to actually work. And that's the difference. Recipes on Chef Bear are thoroughly tested. You know, we're not a glossy magazine. But I do my level best to make sure that you guys get the perfect recipe. That way you always have a uh, sorry, you always have a success in the kitchen. So what Tony just brought over is I have four individual ramekins that I'm gonna stuff with the potato kugel mixture. Traditionally, you would bake this in a nine by 13 or an eight by eight, and people would end up fighting for the coveted crispy corner. If you bake it in individual ramekins, Everybody gets their whole rounded corner. Um, rounded corner, that doesn't make any sense mathematically, but I think you understand what I mean. And everybody gets their own crispy topping. You know, you get those crispy bits. It's just, it's gonna be freaking fantastic. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna ladle this into the ramekins. And any that I have left over, we're gonna pour into it. To, Tony, would you mind greasing that eight by eight? So if we have any left over, we're gonna transfer it to the eight by eight, and then we're gonna bake that at the same time. So you'll notice that I'm stuffing here the ramekins with the, with the potato mixture, and we're gonna let this sit for just a minute while we're preparing, we're preparing the deconstructed cabbage rolls, and then everything's gonna go in the oven about the same time. And here's the beautiful thing, about 30 to 40 minutes, this will probably take 40 minutes where the, where the glunky or the deconstructed cabbage roll will take about 30. But things are going to be done at almost the same time. No, that spoon is not working. So you always want to make sure you have the right kitchen tool for the job you're doing. I was trying to be cute and use a wooden spoon. You know what? That didn't work as well. So let me go to my classic spoon here. Much better. Get some good scoopage. You know what? Maybe my proportions weren't so off with the potatoes. It looks like we're gonna be close. All right, so let me fill up this last. You know what? Actually, we ended up filling four of these regard. Wow, I would not have thought it would have worked out that way. I guess Bobby's smiling down on me. <laughs> she doesn't want her number one grandson looking like a fool. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, and now Bobby would have never done this. I'm gonna add 
just, just a touch of black pepper on top for a little extra flavor. You know, for Booby, this would have been sacrilege because, you know, she came from the old country where salt and pepper were considered exotic. Those of you who grew up in traditional Jewish households know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm looking at these. I think they're going to take about 40 minutes. So I'm going to get them into the 350 degree oven while I put together the deconstructed cabbage rolls. By the time we get the cabbage rolls done, everything should come out at the same time. All right, so let me transfer these to the hot oven and move over my maison place for everything else. All right, so what we have here, and you'll notice that I've already prepared the meatballs, which is ground beef, onion, parsley, what else was in there, Tony? I'm trying to remember. Ground beef, a uh, little salt and pepper, and that was it. Oh, so egg. Egg. In one or two eggs. Uh, I did three eggs. I'm, so okay. three. It's, yeah. Three I mean, eggs. Yeah, we originally started with two, but I thought I needed another. So um, again, we're testing. So we're rolling with the punches. So what we have here is that we have some, we have some tomato sauce, some canned tomatoes, now, granted, because I'm going the more savory route, I use the Italian diced tomatoes with a little bit of basil, a little bit of garlic. You know, use what you have on hand. There, there's nothing wrong with that. We add a little bit of paprika, salt, pepper, a little bit of chili flake in here. And remind me, what else did we add? Lemon juice and sugar. So the, the juice of one lemon, the zest, and just a pinch of sugar to get rid of that acid bite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a clean spoon. Actually, I'm just going to rinse this spoon. Because I'm lazy. I don't want to do a bunch of dishes. And I'm going to pour some sauce over the top. So about half the sauce on on the meatballs. On the meatballs themselves. And, and again, this is a deconstructed um, stuffed Kid cabbage. cabbage. Um, so, now remember, traditionally when your grandmother or your mother made stuffed cabbage, literally boiling a head of cabbage, picking off the, picking off the bigger leaves, making sure they were pliable, taking the meat with the rice mixture, rolling that up, you know, at the same time preparing this sweet and savory tomato sauce, or in my case, sickly sweet tomato sauce. Throwing it all together in a casserole dish. A ton of work. Here, we made it really easy peasy. If you can make a meatball, you can make this deconstructed cabbage. Now, one thing while we were making the meatballs, Tony made the meatballs and I boiled up the cabbage. One thing that we did differently that Bobby would have never done we added eight whole cloves as an aromatic and flavor to the cabbage. And trust me, guys, if you've never thought about adding cloves, and you can pick them out later to your boiled cabbage for either this deconstructed cabbage roll or even for St. Patty's Day for your, for your brisket, your corned beef and cabbage, give it a shot. It's freaking delicious. Now, again, remember, pick out those, make sure you pick out those whole cloves because you definitely don't want to chomp down on one of those. That'll destroy your palate for the night. Then no. Um, All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this cabbage. It was one head of cabbage. And it just wilted it to down a little bit so it's cooked. And then you just, you know, you pour it over. Now, if you want to make the more traditional, cap, you know, cabbage rolls, more power to you. But I have to be honest, I don't have a lot of time for that. This deconstructed version really spoke to me. Because I, I remember Bobby spending hours trying to put dinner together sometimes. And our, in our modern, hectic world, let's be honest, we just don't have time for that. All right, so I'm going to pour the, the cabbage over pretty heavily. And remember, this cabbage is already cooked, but it will wilt down even a little bit further. 
So if it looks like a lot, don't worry about it. It'll, it'll come out perfect and delicious. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna top with the remainder of my tomato mixture. Let me spread that bad boy around. I probably went a little heavy on the meatballs, but that's fine. It'll be good. Make sure there's no tomato sauce left behind. And just because we're going a little bit of that savory route, I'm going to top with just a quick sprinkle of chili pepper. Now granted, this is completely optional, completely non-traditional, but hey, I'm Chef Bear. I break the rules. And I like spice, so there's nothing wrong with that. All right, then I'm going to put this in the oven right next to the kugel at 350 degrees for about 30, 35 minutes. And I'm going to set a timer so I don't forget about it. All right, so now I'm going to bring Tony in to talk about the process that we went through to make this babka. So speaking of this babka, let me show you the end product. Literally, we, we thought we were going to make about one loaf. And, you know, we didn't, have a, we didn't have a bump pan or a babka pan. So we did a bread loaf in a free form. But it's freaking delicious. You know, we came off with a Nutella hazelnut stuffed one. And then a traditional oats and brown sugar kind of streusel one. So I'm going to walk off camera and let Tony shine doing what he does best, describing how we came up with this recipe and how we baked it. Guys, you want to stay tuned for this one because this dude knows how to bake. I can pretend to have a bake. He's certifiable. Thank you, Tony. So the recipe, we um, kind of did just a baroche recipe. Um, and... Uh, and we uh, refrigerated. We made this on Thursday. And we refrigerated that dough. You can refrigerate this dough up to five days. So it's a baroche. It's got a lot of butter, a lot of egg in the, in the dough. Um, what we did, and then after we refrigerated it uh, to this morning, uh, Robert took it out of the refrigerator to kind of bring the room temp a little bit. And then I uh, took half of the, the dough and I thought it was a lot of dough, so I took half the dough and I just was going to make the one loaf with Nutella and the roasted uh, hazelnuts in it. Uh, just kind of warmed up the Nutella a little bit. So what I did is take the half the dough, put it on a floured um, board, rolled it out, um, and then we took the Nutella, spread it on there, a little bit of the nuts on there, and you roll it up like a pinwheel roll. Uh, we put this one in a loaf pan. Like he said, it's normally put in a butt pan or there are probably some specialty pans, but we did this one in a low pan. We had this extra dough and we thought, well, let's try to do something a little different. We did a cinnamon streusel kind of one with oats, uh, cinnamon, brown sugar, and butter. And I did the same thing, rolled it out, put some in the inside, rolled it, and then we made a freeform one. And I personally think the freeform one looks a lot more better than, than what the pan looked turned out to be um, so then after that you let it we let it proof for another hour to 40 it says 40 to, to an hour minutes and um, then we baked it and then it, we're letting it cool now and then it, a normally traditional vodka you're gonna brush rum on it so it soaks into the, the dough a little bit so and we might be doing that later on so uh, and for you guys who are thinking, how the hell does Robert, a.k.a. Chef Bear, and Tony and his husband, Austin, have time to bake all these items? I'm going to walk you through in a future video our method. Now, granted, it's based on, and I'm forgetting their names. It, it's based on Jeff Hertzberg and Zoe Francois. They have a foolproof refrigerator no almost no need refrigerator proof process now tony and i working together over the last couple months 
have tweaked and have made that a little bit better. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk you through that process in a future video. We're gonna show you how we put together a prototypical classic brioche mm -hmm. and how we could spin that into one, two, three different kinds of desserts, different kinds of breads. Again, it's that efficiency and movement. It's becoming an effective cook. It's that planning and that prep work. Again, we're, Tony and I fully subscribe and lean in to the orange print. Mm -hmm. Tony, yes. thank you for the hard yes. work. And that babka looks freaking delicious. Can we start with dessert? I, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, um, the, uh, a quick note about the dough. You will think that it, when you're mixing it, we mix it in our KitchenAid, it may be look really sticky. But trust me, when you put it in the refrigerator and give it a day, two days, it comes out looking like an, like almost a dough. And it's not, it doesn't like stick to your hands really too bad. Um, you just got to remember that flour is absorbing that moisture and it's not going to absorb it immediately. So you're going to think, oh, I got to put more flour in that. You do not put more flour in that. Fight that urge. Yes, fight that urge and know that if you let it sit and wait, it will. And just opening the refrigerator and, and sn smelling the dough, the yeast, it's just a wonderful. But this is more uh, like cake, uh, would be like a cakey kind of dough because of the butter and the eggs and very rich. In, in that aspect of it, so. All right, guys. Thank you, Tony. Yes. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we could sit here for the next 29 minutes and 31 seconds, but I'm not gonna fill your, your YouTube, your Facebook, even if you're watching this on confidentkitchen.net or chefbear.net, which you guys aren't on Chef Bear, you should be, because that's where these recipes are found. I'm not going to fill your computer screen, your phone time, your screen time with a bunch of dead air. But what I want you to do is look at the resource section. Check out the recipes, the notes, the feedback that I'm going to provide. And try making these recipes today. Honor the loved ones in your life. Even with those that are with us or not with us any longer. Honor their memory. Honor their spirit and cook for those that you love. Remember, this cooking is not only about feeding your body, but it's about feeding your soul. All right, it's been fun being with you in the kitchen. We'll cook, we'll cook together soon, I promise. Chef Bear out.